Uh uh. Nah, bro. Dude, he's a fidget spinner, bro. <laughs> he just keeps going, bro. Is he gonna cry, bro? Make me cry, please. This happened in the last one. <gasps> now, these are some of the most skilled Filipinos, okay? Of course, because these are moments that make you respect Filipinos. I already have so much respect for them. Love them. We'll visit. You already know the deal. These are just moments where you can see the most skilled Filipinos really shine. And also, just you gotta give props. So, without further ado, I'm excited for this. Let's just please check this out. Let's go. Well, Reyes, what can you say? His mind was like Einstein's, you know? He had the greatest ability to think and see a shot that no one else could see. The, the zigzag shot. Yeah, it was amazing. That was, Do wow. you believe he was going to make that shot? I thought he was, uh, I'm sure he was just trying to hit it and he made it, but the way he kicked at it, he had another way to kick at the ball and I, I still to this day don't understand why he kicked that way. He could have kicked the other way. But he kicked the way he could win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, look how incredibly kind he looks, too. Look! A head scratcher, but a genius. Well, that's like a real good look. Huh? Uh, uh, Toothless, but the head most scratcher dangerous. for real. Yo, Casual Chuck. Great video, homie. Love it already. His legend was so famous that some aspiring pool players had all their teeth removed just to replicate his success. <laughs> Yo! And I guess it worked. Hey. Meet the magician, Efren Bata Reyes. It worked. He was born and raised in Pampanga. He's the fifth child among nine siblings. It was quite a big family to keep afloat, so at age five, his dad brought him along to Manila to have a better income to support them. Efren was a shy kid growing up and struggled to interact with kids his age, so instead of playing Aww. outside, he worked as a spotter and a janitor at his uncle's billiards hall called Lucky 13. Mm. He made it his home as he played billiards all day and slept on the pool table every night. This Aww. is when he started gambling at a very young age. He was so young that he was too short to reach the pool table so he would stack some coke cases just to make some of his shots. This was when he got the nickname Bata to distinguish him from an older Efren who also played pool in their hall. As Efren continued playing, he kept rapidly improving until he beat every player in their hall. Wow, so at age man. 21, his uncle started bringing him along to bigger money matches. The Hustler movie was very popular at the time so gambling at different pool halls was a thing and Efren was beating everybody. Yo. There was a time when he went to Clark Air Base to literally farm dollars from American soldiers. <laughs> and because of farm this, them, his bro. name had become a terror in pool halls and he started running out of opponents. So his income from gambling started to run dry. He had no choice but to work for a local comic printing press which paid him only 90 pesos or $2 a month. Obviously, he wasn't satisfied with how much he was making so in just less than a year, he went right back into playing billiards. In 1975, Efren started planning a trip to the US to play against American oh pool players. Goodness. But an American sports writer apparently had been taking notice of him while he was beating everybody. This writer went back to the US and informed their best pool players that a new threat is emerging. His name is Efren Reyes. That's just so Because dope, of this, man. the Americans were able to scout him and found out about his reputation. So this ruined Efren's plan to hustle American players for money. For those who are confused, hustling is kind of similar to smurfing in video games. It's like a Yo, mythic I'd player playing in the Grandmaster rank in Mobile Legends to farm easy wins. I'd be smurfing, guys, in Efren's my bad. case, he wanted to farm wins which translate into dollars to support his family. In order to counter that obstacle, he decided to take on an alias, Cesar Morales. This allowed him to play everybody in the US and beat every one of them, oh billiard hall after billiard hall. He left a trail of destruction leaving each opponent demoralized not knowing what hit them. Like I swear, <laughs> his story almost sounds like a backstory of an OP anime sensei who looks like a joke but when in action, transforms into some kind of a forbidden yeah, folklore dude. beast. Anyway, his hustling days continued in the 80s until he discovered the big money tournaments. He entered under his alias and went on to win his first ever tournament as Cesar Morales. 
This gained him instant fans. But when he was asked to sign one of those autographs, he accidentally exposed his identity because he subconsciously wrote his real name. And because of this, his hustling days were over so he focused on playing and dominating tournaments under his real name. He quickly earned the nickname The Magician because of his aggressive style of play and shot selections that no one, even the greatest pool players, dared to attempt, especially wow, in high-pressure situations. Attempting those shots is one thing, but making them consistently just puts the man in a league of his own. Watch the nine. Look at the nine! Look at the nine! Oh! What a shot! Just no! like this one, Efren was just a bystander and some younger professional players playing pool were taking too long in planning their next shot, so they handed over the cue stick to Efren. They had no idea that Efren already saw the shot from a mile away. What? He did it with his bag on his back? And a hanky on his hand. Yo, nah, here are more examples. Bro. So Eflin, looking up. Oh, whoa, what am I shot? You left me. That's a race. <laughs> yeah, wow, bro. We are son. Wait. Ah, yo. Yo. <laughs> he just laughs at it every time, too. Aside from these amazing shots, Efren is also the author of the greatest shot in pool history. He was playing against one of the greatest pool players at the time, Earl Strickland. The match was very close as they were tied at 12 racks each in a race to 13 match. Whoever wins the rack becomes the champion. Strickland did the break to pocket the two ball, then attempted to pull off a safety play, hiding the one ball behind the seven and eight ball, but he failed to do so, so Efren took advantage. He then handled business as usual. Oh my. Ooh, Yo, he is very accurate, But not man. until the five ball became the object ball. A little bit. Just a little bit, I said. What? The, he didn't have to do that. You see what I'm talking about? Mm, that's right. Now, uh, why did he do that? He got himself into trouble because the six ball was slightly blocking it. But instead of doing a safety play, Efren did this. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh... Watch the eight. Watch the eight. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. An impressive shot for sure, but this wasn't the greatest shot I was talking about because this shot has gotten him into an even bigger trouble. This is the cue ball, and this is the object ball. All three other balls are blocking every option Efren had, so attempting a safety play, let alone hitting the object ball, was virtually impossible. But despite him the looking predicament, around, bro. Efren would proceed to leave his mark by pulling off the greatest shot ever made in the history of billiards. The iconic Z shot. I'm leaving, bro. Take off the headphones. Leave the room. People were in disbelief, including his opponent. Efren didn't even have the chance to finish the rack because his legendary shot obliterated all the hope that was left in Strickland's body as he proceeded to surrender shortly after that. No wonder you asked me to do this. Oh, what a finish. <laughs> this got Efren his third straight championship win in the Sands Regency Open, solidifying his case as one of the greatest pool players wow, to have man. ever lived. What I like the most about Efren is despite all his success, he remained humble. While some opponents would flex on him, I'm breaking the balls very well, so that's uh, that's good for me. I've been playing pool 40 years. I feel like I'm playing perfect. I feel good. I feel very comfortable. It just looks like a one-man show. You know, that, that's why this game is the toughest game on the planet. <laughs> He'd usually just respond with humility. Well, I feel nervous now because I, you know, I, I don't know if I'm playing good or I, or I'm playing bad. I need lucky to play. <laughs> and then proceeds to give his opponent a high-quality billiard seven. Yeah, bro. Wow. Yeah, you like this so far, huh? Yeah, it looks, looks pretty good over in that section, huh? And after embarrassing them, yeah! he'd usually just say this iconic line. I get lucky too. If you play uh, like this same years before. Uh, Maybe I, I don't have a chance. This is uh, too much money for me, you know. 
Efren's career is definitely full of legendary moments, but it would take me hours to show them all. He's incredibly now, humble. Let me just do the honors of flexing his unmatched achievements. The magician Efren Bata Reyes is a winner of over 100 international titles. He's also the first player ever to have won the WPA World Championships in two different pool disciplines, namely 8-ball and 9-ball. A 4-time Sans Regency wow. champion, a 13-time Derby City Classic champion, and a two-time World Cup champion with his partner, Django Bustamante. To this day, he has earned the respect of not just his countrymen, si paring Efren, hindi ko lang kasangga sa laban. Kasangga ko rin sa buhay. Ati po, oh, apu gayan, si Efren, the magician Reyes. But also sports legends all over the world. He's so good. They're really good at pool. Who? Filipinos? Okay. Some of the best pool players of all time. You see on my wall out there, I have uh, two photos of signed photos of Filipino pool players. Efren awesome, Reyes bro. And um, Francisco Bustamante, top 10. Efren's probably number one ever. Good job by Joe Rogan, man. Good job, player. bro. The best player or the player that I really always liked is Efren Reyes. I, I looked up to Efren. Uh, Efren Reyes. He's one guy I grew up watching when I was young, you know. He's probably the best pool player I've ever seen and probably lived. And he was like an idol, so Efren. Wow. In basketball, there is MJ. In billiards, there is Afren. In bowling, oh, there no. is Paeng. Oh. He is a six time bowling world champion and Guinness world record holder, not to mention a global bowling hall of fame. Mm. He is considered by many as a sports goat, greatest Go. of all time. Bo. Rafael Paeng Puseno was born and raised in Quezon City. His dad was a bowling coach but he first fell in love with the sport of golf and he was even doing great competitively. On one fateful rainy day, young Paeng forgot to bring his umbrella so he had to take shelter. And that shelter turned out to be a bowling alley. From then on, he did nothing else but school and bowling. Mm. With the help of his dad's coaching, Paeng's potential was unleashed as he became a Filipino bowling prodigy and became the national champion only at age 17. Wow, Two dude. Two years later, he would join the 1976 Bowling World Cup and upset everybody as he claimed the championship at 19 years old, making him a record holder in the Guinness Book of World Records as the youngest world champion ever. Back a double. And uh, is now looking for a third. Strike! Find a sportsman. Most people thought it was a fluke until Paeng came back four years later to bag another World Cup win. Favor of 23 year old Hang up on the Seno. Bro. He rolls a strike. He don't play, man. He really don't. Bowling World Cup champion, Hang Nepomushimo from the Philippines. He became famous for his accurate Maybe strikes trash, despite but... having an awkward southpaw bowling arm swing. Strikes are hard for me, bro, sometimes. It really is. It looks as though he's off balance, but of course it's an illusion, or it must be, or he wouldn't be three times a World Cup winner. Watch. It's the style, bro. Yeah, it seemed to step, step off his shot on most occasions. The man literally proved that looks can be deceiving. Title winning shot coming mm. up right now. Ooh, look at that curve. And that is all 10, the strike that he was looking for, and the sign of a man who says, I'm number one. And those fans who have made it all the way here from the Philippines know that they yeah, are looking. Bro. At the world champion for the third time in his career, Pang Nepomuceno comes through on the wire and steals it in the tent as Grabowski threw the title away. Aeng would then go on to continue dominating the sport for a total of four decades as he would win a total of Dang. six world championships and hold a total of four world records, making him the undisputed goal in the sport. He carried our flag since day one, making his entire nation proud. But pride never got into his head. Now listen, you've got the fourth champion, the World Cup title. Are you going to come back for number five? I don't know. Uh, it all depends on the Lord. Because I have oh. to give credit to God. You're very moved, obviously, and, and so are we. Congratulations. Thank you. Aw, bro. 
To this day, he's still active in the sport as the only Asian coach to have the USBC Gold Level certification and continues to hone the skills of the younger generation. But Paeng's generation is just one of a kind because another phenom was also wrecking havoc in the different department. The world of speed. Oh my. Hey, yeah, that's dope. That's from Eternals, isn't it? Lydia Diay de Vega was born and raised in Mekawai and Bulacan. In her childhood, she rarely became the it when playing tag with friends because she was just too fast. This got the attention of the school's athletic coaches, so she got invited to train to compete in the sport of track and field. Lydia's dad was a cop so he was very strict with her so she kept her training in secret until her dad started noticing her getting tired more often which led to him finding out about it. Her tata then gave her a condition that he would only allow her to compete if he coaches her himself. Uh. Lydia agreed so not long after, she started dominating the sport by winning her first two gold medals in the 1981 SEA Games in both the 200 and 400 meter dash. Hey, bro. This got her qualified to compete in the 1982 Asian Games. This is where the big names compete including the favorite to win the event. India's well-known speed powerhouse, PT Usha. <laughs> Dang, girl. Oh my. Fast, bro. But our hungry 18-year-old Lydia was unfazed by the pressure. At first, Lydia seems to be falling behind in the fifth place right before Usha. But on the 50 meter mark, Lydia shifted gears and went pedal to the metal, pulling off the upset and gaining her first Ooh. ever Asian Games gold medal at a very young age, dethroning Usha in the process. Get it going! Wow, bro. But Usha wasn't going down without a fight because come next year in the Asian Championships, she would win the gold against Lydia, officially forming a rivalry between the two fastest women in Asia. Their fans went back and forth about who really was the fastest but all the debate would be put to an end in the 1986 Asian Games. <laughs> Where is she? Oh, in the middle? Oh! Yeah, dude. This win solidified Lydia de Vega's title as Asia's fastest woman. She would then go on to continue her reign until the early 90s, amassing a total of 15 gold medals across different competitions in Asia. To this day, her undeniable speed behind her beautiful smile will always be remembered as an inspiration so for awesome. many aspiring young athletes. That's so cool. And one of those young athletes is this kid. Check this out. Hey, buff. Oh, little roll. Just so much amplitude. So now he don't move like anime Hulk. like backstories, then look no further than Carlos Idriel Yulo. He was born and raised in Malate, Metro Manila. Their house was close to Rizal Memorial Sports Complex so he grew up watching Filipino gymnasts training and competing there. So it was only natural for him to take the same path. He trained every day at a very young age and it paid off as he won most of his competitions in minor leagues. He kept Incredible. training until he became a teenager despite the country's inferior facilities and minimal athlete support. That's until he met <sighs> the Japanese dangerous. gymnastic coach Munihiro Kugimiya. He was sent to the Philippines by the Japan Gymnastics Association to train overseas athletes with good potential. On Coach Kugimiya's first visit, he immediately noticed the disadvantages of Carlos' training conditions. It kinda hurts hearing this from a coach but I cannot disagree because it does happen. Maybe it's the reason why this diving team flopped in the 2015 SEA Games. Philippine diving team, we are having a rough go at it to start oh. off with. Everything got started when diver John Helgerson from Riga earned a zero for his routine which Yo, my exactly back. go as planned as planned. I feel it bro. Back. And then his teammate Josh David Poyo followed him up in a similar fashion by not the rotation on his dive is going in knee first so obviously lots of reaction on social media Yo, sheesh, my back hurt on that brothers. 
Anyway, Coach Kugimiya didn't want Carlos' potential to be wasted so he offered him to train in Japan. Carlos grabbed the opportunity but he never realized how hard it would become for him. He left his family in the Philippines and started living together with Coach Kugimiya in a small apartment while studying high school at Teikyo University. This is a school where most elite student athletes go. Carlos was only on his second year. He struggled in school because he suddenly had to learn to both read and write in Japanese. To accelerate his improvement, Carlos' coach required him to write the entries in his diary on a daily basis. He studied during the daytime and spent the rest of his free time training with his coach. Our young Carlos obviously got culture shocked so he started showing some signs of demotivation. He would make mistakes he normally wouldn't and fall down more often than usual. Coach Kugimiya's very strict training approach wasn't helping either. Hmm. Without thinking. I had a coach like that when I played football. The, don't just training. Not American Carlos football, Diary soccer. Never talked about these feelings, so Coach Kugimiya had no clue about what to do with him anymore. It was so bad that there was a point when Carlos told him that he wanted to quit. The coach was at his wit's end, so he decided to pull off one more trick to motivate Carlos. He brought him to an All Japan National Gymnastics competition. Coach Kugimiya was one of the judges there and one of the competitors is Japan's Olympic gold medalist, Kenzo Shirai. This guy is considered as one of the greatest young gymnasts of the day. Reigning floor champion Shirai put in a reigning champion performance on the floor. His 16.133 helping Japan secure gold for the first time since 2004. He holds two Guinness wow. World Records as the youngest gymnast to ever win a gold medal on a world stage at 17 and the only human being to have pulled off a salto backward stretch with quadruple twist or known today as the Shirai. Oh my goodness man. Yes, it was named after him along with five other great moves he invented himself. The dude was an absolute genius. He rightfully earned the nickname Mr. Twister and I'm not even <laughs> surprised about it. Watching Kenzo perform and win seemed oh to have my. made Carlos uneasy. He might have just realized that he still had a long, long way to go. But in that day's diary entry, he never talked about quitting. Instead, he wrote about his admiration for Kenzo's talent. He started writing about his feelings, which was kind of unusual for him. The next day, he showed up early in the gym and wrote his own training plan without being told by his coach. He seemed awesome. to have found a new source of motivation. Later For me, it was year, Cristiano Carlos Ronaldo. competed in the 2018 World Artistic Gymnastics Championships in Doha, Qatar. And guess what? One of his opponents was Mr. Twister himself, Ooh. Kenzo Shirai. He performed first and, of course, lived up to his nickname. The reigning world champion on this apparatus from Japan, Kenzo Shirai. Oh, and the triple twisting double tuck to start. Oh my! <laughs> he twists so quickly. Uh uh. Nah, bro. Dude, he's a fidget spinner, two bro. And a half back, two and a half front. And that's a quadruple twisting somersault. <laughs> Just keeps going, Deep bro. Breath. Focus on the task at hand. Three and a half twists. Followed by the full twisting front. So difficult. And a triple mm. twist to finish. You have time to spare. That was Kenzo Shirai. My Such a terrifying way to establish wow. immense pressure. They can only imagine what Carlos was feeling at that moment because he's the next yeah. one to perform. And what a moment for this youngster. Carlo Yudlo from Philippines. Come on, Just Carlos. 18 years of age, his first year as a senior. Small gymnast, but he packs a punch. The announcer said that because Carlos only stands at 4'11". While Kenzo is known for his twist, Carlos shines with his power and elevation. Double pike half, Whoa. beautiful fight. Just take a look at that height. Dude is literally a living trampoline. Yeah, bro, what? Oh! Just mm. holding it together there on the combination. He got it though. 
Oh, my. oh three and a half, half. That was lovely. Wow, man. Tidy in the air. He's like a fairy, bro. Fast in the twist. Now the arms coming out to show control. Full twist in front, double twist in front. Yo. Excellent awareness. Magnificent, bro. Just magical. I love Quick it. Glance at the scoreboard. How much time has he got? He's got this 10 seconds. That's no penalty for time. There's a triple twist to finish. He's there. Clenching the floor with his toes. What a talent this young man is. Wow. The score coming in. 14.6. He moves into the silver medal position. Carlos' effort apparently wasn't enough, and his silver medal would then become bronze because Russia's Artur de la Loyan would beat Kenzo's score, dethroning him in the process. Oh, Straight wow. Straight front, double pipe front, lovely control. Wow. Dang, bro. Double Just the fact human, humans can move like this. They can really move like this. His lovely style in his movement. It's unbelievably beautiful, man. Two and a half twist, double twisting front. I love it Locking so the much. Feet together. Ooh! Carlos' bronze medal finish wasn't perfect for sure, but it still made him the first Filipino and Southeast Asian gymnast to have ever won a medal on a world stage. He kept competing and training after the event until it was time for another shot the following year the 2019 World Artistic Gymnastics Championships in Stuttgart, Germany. Kenzo Shirai didn't make it to the competition because of an ankle injury. But the guy who beat them, Arthur de la Loyan, was there. But surprisingly, he was a non-factor in the competition as he only finished fourth. However, we still have Arthur de la Loyan to go. He's got a pretty good record at the World Championship. Oh, but... There, he lost his form slightly. The guy who became a problem, though, was Israel's Artem Dolgopia. Powerful, powerful tumbler. Oh, oh my. Okay. So the hands been double front with one and a half twist. You don't see many of those. And again, half in, half out. Oh, fantastic work from Artem Dolgopiat. He showcased a balance of power and technique, which gave him a score that is high enough to warrant an early celebration from the crowd and his team, because it was even higher than the score of last year's reigning Insane. champion. Insane, bro, hold on. But you guys might have already heard of the saying, no, never me. count a Filipino out. Yeah. Now then, what of this gentleman, Carlos Yulo of the Philippines, the bronze medalist on this apparatus. Taking his turn, Carlos Yulo braces himself before flight. To bag the gold, he needs to apply everything he has learned up to this point. He's still just 19 years of age, and look at the flight in that. Full twist in double straight. Absolutely beautiful. Look at the acceleration. Wow. Oh, double pie calf kicking out. Whoa. And twisting so quickly. Youngster from the Philippines. Mm. Looking good so far. <laughs> Rising to the occasion. Wow, dude. Oh my. It's so elegant. Look at So fast in the twist. That was just a double twist there. It happened so quickly. And a triple twist to finish off from Carlos Edriel Yulo. That Looking is... at Artem's face feels like he's about to pass out. And when the score gets revealed, it's Yulo! 515.3 for Carlos Yulo! He's gone into the lead! He already made history a year ago. He might just win an absolutely unprecedented goal for the Philippines. What a moment for him and what a moment for the Philippines. And just like that, Carlo Yulo won the first ever gold medal for the awesome, Philippines in Artistic bro. World's Gymnastics. Ladies and gentlemen, in honor to the winner, the national anthem of Philippines. Is he gonna cry, bro? Make me cry, please. This happened in the last one. <gasps> Look who it is! Look who it is! The ball. That's amazing.
brawl. Woof! What a ride this video has been. Yeah. Imagine if Carlos really quit back then. None of this would have ever happened. This is why he was always very grateful to his coach. Wala po ako ngayon dito sa harap niyo kung hindi po dahil dun sa kanya. So what did we learn from their stories? For me, it's their unrelenting guts and determination. They did not win just because they are Filipinos. They won because they put in the work. Mm -hmm. They went through loss, pain, and insurmountable obstacles. They had the choice to make those things become the reason for their failure. But instead, they made it become the reason for their success. Wow, and that's bro. what makes them Filipino. So what about you? Are you here to just listen to Filipino success stories? Or decide to become the story? Woo! Yo, Casual Chop, fantastic, bro. The best thing I can say is this was a fantastic video. Absolutely loved it. I mean, the stories are just brilliant, you know? Just really creating your own story and pushing through and, you know, doing exactly what you love or, or seeking to, to find love in what you do, you know? Like, some of these people, they, they didn't even want to really do it. They did it. They had to do it for, for money and they found themselves loving it. They found a love for it. There's so many beauties in that and these people are so incredibly talented along with the with the fact that they're so very hardworking. It's just incredible, man. Filipinos, as usual, just incredible, bro. This is why I'm so excited to eventually travel to the Philippines and that's gonna be an experience of a lifetime when I bring my friend of course it's gonna be something amazing it's just phenomenal bro I, I just find it so amazing truly it just makes me smile it makes me feel good it makes my heart feel really really at ease it just makes my soul kind of feel like um fulfilled you know like it's just so amazing to see people succeed people who who deserve it you know it's just amazing now speaking of amazing that's you guys and I want to say thank you so 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 much for watching I really do appreciate it hey if you liked it, leave a like. If you loved it, subscribe. If you want more, let me know down in the comments below. And yeah, till next time, guys. Peace.